It's Show Us Your Tips, Pro Group Racing, uh, bringing you the Hawkesbury preview as well as a look at the feature cards from uh, Morfordville and Eagle Farm. Dag and Beaver with you to go through it all. After a hectic month or so, we're back hopefully on a regular twice a week schedule. Check out progroupracing.com.au for much more. Just sign up their subscription service there and you'll receive all this in your inbox free every week. Beaver, how are you? Mate, I am good as gold. Um, Got for freshen can't up. complain at all, mate. Uh, pretty good after a freshen up. Uh, yeah, uh, all's good and well with me, mate. Very good. Good to hear. Uh, getting through a busy time of year in the, uh, sales, the racing sales industry, so hopefully a bit more time to get back into the form now that's come out the other side. But we'll kick off tomorrow looking at... A Hawkesbury first, a 10 race card, which is going to be in a softish track. The rail is true. Look, I'd want to see him making ground before I start looking too far away from any leaders, I'd think, Beaver. Yes, I think I think that's right. Um, yeah, you probably want to be on the pace, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, tricky to... Can be, I mean, different class of horse, but um, can be tricky to make ground there. Uh, so let's watch and see how that does pan out. Um, we kick off with particularly, the, when the, particularly when the track's a little bit soft. Hundred percent, yeah, exactly. So, we kick off with the two-year-olds over the fourteen hundred meters. Though, um, how are we going to start the day? Yeah, probably one of the trickiest races on the the, the day. To be honest, uh, a lot of horses that have have well, the favourite hasn't started, and then uh, everything else has only really had the one start or two starts, um, and all of them have really shown. Um, a little bit of ability um, that could put a, make a case for him in this race. Um, I've settled on, uh, which I don't like doing, the Waterhouse trained Begunda. Um, okay. It's drawn wide, um, but that probably means it's going to push forward. It's had the one start at Hawkesbury and, and was on the pace, only beaten half a length um, and stuck on pretty well there. I think from the 13 gate, it's probably going to push forward. It's got no choice. Um, and, and it might just mean that it can dictate out in front and prove hard to run down. So I've gone for a bit of each way value there in the first uh, with the main danger being Basquiat uh, from the Wallace stable. Um, its first up run was impressive enough, again, just off the pace and stuck on quite well. Yeah, I, I've ended up with Basquiat. I've just noticed his actually favourite here um, with a bit of a market change since I've looked. Uh, for all the reasons you said, I like the debut. It was in a, I was given a chance in last week. Uh, save for this week, it also gets J Mac uh, chased uh, North Star Laths and um, beat the rest pretty easily. And I think that sort of fits here. I'm guessing it's been saved here for a reason. Might be Queensland bound. And uh, I, I like the way it sets up here. And I like what you've said with Bergander, who's going to have some map favours here. I don't. I think it does go forward. Josh Parr, Wardhouse, Wide Gate, all seem like ticks. So. Uh, I think it's not a bad way to start the day, and at least we'll get an indication of how the track's playing. Yeah, 100%. Race two is the highway. Uh, have you, there is a Masara runner here. Is that where you're just diving into, or you, you've looked at this at all? No, I haven't dived into that one, mate. So, to your disappointment. Um, now, I've gone for Hardware Lane here uh, from the beer stable. Uh, has a pretty good strike rate, this stable. It's going quite well at the moment. This gets McDonald aboard. Drawn, drawn the right gate. Again, will probably push forward. Um, the, it won a really nice race last preparation. It's maiden by six lengths in Albury. And then they took it to Mooney Valley, uh, which it led up and, and um, caved in a bit but uh even as its first start it started in a re listed race at um Caulfield so I think they think this has got a bit of ability I don't mind backing horses with golden form uh, when they run well so I'm going third up here hardware lane beautiful um I I struggle to get through the form for the highways at the best of times so a pass from me the midway the benchmark 72 over 1500 meters doesn't as has been the pattern lately doesn't get much easier have you got anything here yeah, I thought this was pretty tricky as well. Um, I did, if I was going to have a bet, I was going to go for for the 17, Divine Breath. Um, only just got pipped by French Bonnet last start. I think the barrier changes um, just gives a little Divine Breath probably that little bit better luck and run in transit and may, may mean it can turn the tables. Yeah, I actually, But this is an open race. Yeah, I actually did do the form on this and I still had no idea. Um, you know, wide gate, Josh Parr again, French bonnet off the win. You've mentioned that form line. 
Uh, so I, I don't. I think there's a bit of a tail, but then I don't know where I want to then go. Short shorts coming well, back from the group race, so I don't. You know I mean, I'm, I don't quite know. Yeah, I thought if fits. you were looking for something around twenties, a could be could be a bit of a smoky. Um, uh, two starts back, it ran in a group three, and prior to that, it won a nice race at Rose Hill um, against Speeding Fantastic Baby. So it's uh, it can run well, and then last preparation, it did run in group one and group two races. So again, um, a horse that they probably think is not the worst horse going around. So around 20s, it could be a bit of a knockout in this midway. Yeah, cool. Nice bit of value there. Race four is the benchmark 78, 1800 metres where I can get more involved. I think there's, well, I think there's only two chances and um, the market suggests the same. And at the current price, you can get away with probably backing both of them. Speaker Calipor, uh, Australian debut was nice at the track. Out to 800 metres, looks like it's going to be right up its alley. And... Um, John perfectly and a bit of a claim as well just in case from deep strike who comes up after a couple of nice wins down south uh not necessarily stamping that as fitting him majorly but it also means it's away from a lot of the stuff that's the, the rest of these are attached to and does get bowman uh gets into a running line there doesn't have to be might almost be outside lead to be honest with you so i think they're the two uh, or one one which bowman will probably be looking for i think they're the two and they're the um only two i really want to entertain Yep, I think that's a um, pretty reasonable call here. I, I could only find the two as well, um, and they were the only two that I wanted to entertain. I stuck with Calipore. I really liked its first start win, um, and as you said, gets a claim here. Uh, jump in distance suits, and yeah, looks to get the right nice right, right in transit. So I've stuck with Calipore with Deep Strike, the main danger. Beautiful race five, the 1100 metre benchmark 78. This is a good little race. Uh, a tricky little race, mm. but um, where well, there's a few chances, but I, I did like the trial. I end up on top for me, Authentic Jewel. Um, was going quite well at the end of last prep, resumes at home, two nice trials, and um, mapped to get basically leaders, either fence or lead, uh, lead or leaders back, uh, as my map just closes, and um, hard to run past. Uh, a couple other ones I want to mention, uh, Rainbow Connection, a, a nice trial, uh, did win first up at last prep. Uh, and one that might get the perfect run right on leaders back end, J-Mac at a price, is Selber Rose, who you could argue is, might be the best horse in the race. So a few there. Um, Rain, and um, I haven't even mentioned Naj Marty, who did break through with a nice win at Caulfield, but now comes back up here. But I was looking at the home hometown girl here. Beaver, what were you thinking? Yeah, so I think... It is an interesting race. I think it's really open and there's plenty of chances. I think um, what's going to be really tricky here is how does the the speed duel um, start off uh, up front? Because I, I think Queen Bellissimo um, is a huge chance as well. It goes really yeah. well for it first up and it, um, it'll show speed as well. Um, and particularly from that gate. So gate 13 it just depends how how much it has to be used up to get across the field here i would have thought i think it's a major player um you're right with authentic jewel it goes can, goes well so i kind of led to authentic jewel as well uh, purely because i thought queen bellissimo might go really hard and authentic jewel just might get the tuck in behind um so i think they're both chances and you can't rule out them Nudge Maddie, like no. it was pretty good last start. Um, it let, let down um, quite impressively. It had the sit right off the speed. Um, and we know it's got ability. Uh, so I, I couldn't I couldn't rule it out in a race like this. Um, so huge watch on each, it. So I kind of had the three, but I went for Authentic Jewel um, with a watch on the other two. Beautiful race six is the Hawkesbury Gold Rush over the 1100 metres. And as well, uh, where, look, I set out wanting to try and find 11-11, uh, you know, you get with it, but uh, ultimately, just Malkovich has every advantage here, has the right draw, has the right run, there's no other pace, right jockey, loves a little bit of cut out of the ground, just uh, everywhere you look, there's a tick for him, so I had to put him on top, as the market suggests. Uh, very interesting to see how 11-11 and Tycoonus resume, because I assume they'll probably head to Queensland for some of the, you know, those mid-card races up there. 
Yeah, I, I said it on Malkovic as well for exactly the same reasons. Uh, everything sets up in its favour here. Uh, track it's one, one from one. Um, goes good at this distance. Uh, looks to get control of the pace here. Has been running in you know top group company races. Um, and the other two main dangers have a pretty average first up record. They generally don't go well first up. 11-11 uh, hasn't won in seven tries and Tycoonus hasn't won in five tries first up. So I suspect they'll be um, better for the run. Um, and given that, Malkovich might be just a bit too nippy. Yep. Uh, race seven is the Group 3 Hawkesbury Guineas, 1,400 metres. Mr Mozart heads the market. How are you playing it? Yeah, look, uh, there's, there's only, you know, three or four chances here. Um, Mr. Mozart just looks too good to, going too good at the moment. Um, the last couple of runs have been outstanding. The only thing I think that beats Mr. Mozart here is the, the jump in weight. Uh, jumps from 53 to 59. Um, but it was just too good for our playboy, our playboy last start who come out and won after that. Um, so that's a great form line. And then the start before that, again, was on pace, uh, kicked clear and was just too good for him. So last two starts was back to form after racing in group one and group two. And then last preparation, um, again, uh, ran really well in, in group races. Um, it's a horse that's probably got a little bit of untapped potential here. And I think it's going to be super hard to beat. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it on top as well. Um, not suggesting the market doesn't uh i think the bet here though has to be valana uh just because it off the win it did beat key rival lock eagle uh i'd want to see him making ground because there's a very good chance nothing makes ground in mr moats that might be a almost a good thing but if we are valana loves a wet uh, off a win off two wins and um you get an each way price i think it has to be second pick lock eagle third and i think there's a gap I, i'm happy to pretty much, you know, pen the rest as chances for now. So, again, a, a good betting race. Yeah, I, I just I just look at this and I look at, you know, and I, I always say that you've got Mr Mozart who's been ra winning group races and the others have, you know, Lock Eagle a couple of starts back was one that's made in and then a midweek at Warwick Farm. Um, so it's, and also if it's you rising if you class. Sort of, which I have been saying, if you say the three-year-olds are no good, well... Um, pretty easy to then avoid aren't they yeah that's right so it is a big step up in class so um while it's had good form uh mr mozart is is flying at the moment in group races yep no arguments at all uh 1300 meter hawksby crown is the next on the card for the girls uh what are you doing here yeah this was this was really tricky um again a tough race i really wanted to to find never talk and jump the broom but mm. from gate 14 and 16 uh i think they're going to go they're going to have to go all the way back um and they're going to have to give some of these other horses a big start and i just don't know whether that's going to be um doable so you're going to have to watch the track if you can't make uh, ground then it's going to be really hard for those two uh which kind of brings you back to to brooks brookspear um it's going to jump it's going to be on the pace uh, just sitting off speed. And if you go back to its form last preparation, it was um, a hot favourite in some pretty decent races, uh, racing against the likes of Expat. Uh, so started twos on in in the Gold Coast, um, a group three up at, Gold, uh, at Gosford, sorry, and then went to Gold Coast and was only just beaten by Snap Dancer, was well in the market. I thought its trial was really good. Fantastic, uh, yeah, really good trial. Yeah, I think it's going to be super hard to beat in this. Yeah, it, it's on top for me. J Mac Waller, uh, according to the New South Wales maps, it's going to be, you know, fall back in the running line, so just a perfect spot. And a lot of these other classier mares just have been out of form. So, yeah, on top for me, had enough of never talk, so jump the broom, next pick. And, um, yeah, that was about it. Um, even, you know, trying to be sneaky and find one like more profits or mirror vision, but they're just not going well enough. Um, so yeah, I think the main research. danger is probably fast Chanel, to be honest. Mm. And, and potentially a, a watch on um, this other horse here. She's a gift. Um, but 
The Schofield book suggests probably no real intent just yet. Um, yeah, so let's move on to race. Anything else you want to mention, yes? Number nine. No, race nine is the uh, Gold Cup. What do you think? What are your thoughts here? Yeah, this is, a, this is a, a nice little race again, the Gold Cup, but there's a lot of horses here that are out of form. Yeah. Um, which makes it pretty hard. You know, you sort of get down past the first, even once you get past the first rule two, uh, at Cado and Kerwin's Lane, uh, the rest of the, these horses uh, are severely out of form. Um, some may have been running in better quality races, but uh, yes, yeah, super hard to find in a race like this, um, given given their form. Uh, for that reason, I stuck with uh, Kerwin's Lane. Uh, I thought the first up run was pretty good at Ramwick. Uh, behind our playboy was midfield, made some good ground towards the end in pretty heavy going. Uh, this, this should suit. Again, it'll probably just sit midfield, drawn eight. Uh, Tom Sherry can uh, pull it out and um, finish off over the top of him. Uh, yeah, the I've sort of found that the two O'Shea horses a little bit here, and I'm not sure the stable's going as good as it was a few months ago, but uh, ended up, the other one I did find, and the one, one I will back is Art Cadeau. It's been in the wrong part of the track twice in both its runs and run really well. I don't know how it got to the outside from gate one on a red-hot rail, uh, last start, but he did. Um, so hopefully he camps exactly where the map has him, close enough to to run down the leaders, and he'll be very hard to beat. He's very honest. Uh, the one that I sort of wanted to find was Berdebeck. Uh, Bowman on. He will be back from that gate, and you can't take a lot of the trials, but he just sort of fits this race as a as one of those sort of horses that can uh, swamp in a race Crap. like this, yeah, and, and you're getting, what, 17, 18 bucks. Um, for that, mention Kerwin's Lane, and when I get to the quaddy, I'll probably throw those other sort of Waller blue colours that um, pop up here and there in just to be safe. But that was that was my thoughts there. And we will finish the day with a 1,300 metre benchmark 78, where I will finish the day with, um, well, the unbeaten one, Norwegian Bliss. Uh, impressive return, gets another race where he gets to pretty much get a lot of control of the pace. He probably sits right on uh, Vranelli up front and um, I think it's another one that's better than 78 grade and J-Mac uh, sticks and hard to beat. Um, your thoughts? Yeah, I thought exactly the same. I uh, can't see any reason why it won't be six from six. Uh, the first up run would have done it the world of good. Uh, I think it will strip fit it out of that uh, so that's going to be benefit. I think the extra 200 metres up to the 1,300 is right up its alley. Um, it'll it'll sit up on the pace. Uh, it's fairly bomb-proof, hard to beat. And, yeah, I think that's probably um, a nice little bet around the $3 mark. Um, am I crazy? Was Francesco Guardi like $2.50 last week when it was scratched or the week before? I think... That's I about right. the horse. It's now thirties. What I'd like that was the only thing I couldn't get. Gate what they said, gate twenty first up. It was like I said, resuming short price. I, unless I'm thinking of another ball of horse. Um anyway, I might have something on that just as a saver. It uh and another a couple other bits and pieces, Night and Powers has been sort of one we found here and there, not to any great effect. Uh yeah, but anyway, let's get to uh, am I still in a Hawkesbury quaddy? The carnival line. Yeah, you are. All right. Uh, first leg, one Mr. Mozart, five Valana, six Lock Eagle. Second leg, eight. Uh, eight, uh, she's the gift. Ten, uh, Brooks Buyer. Eleven, Fashionel. Fifteen, Jump the Broom. Third leg, two Berdebeck. I believe so, you went out. 10, art, ten a tissue, 11 art cadeau, and 17 where he falls. And we'll come home with two night of power, three Norwegian bliss, four Francesco Guardi, 11 oceanic flash, and 12 grand remore. 
to wrap up the quarter. Now for progroupracing.com.au, your best and value at Hawkesbury. Yeah, my best comes up in race seven, number one, Mr. Mozart, around the $2.50 mark. And my value bet is race two, number six, Hardware Lane. I think you can get probably around Very the good. sevens. The hardware in the highway of the, ba- the value for Beaver. I'm going to make my best Calipor and my value Art Cadeau for the card at Hawkesbury. Uh, so for the rest of the show, we're just going to touch on the features at Norfolkville and Brisbane. Let us know if um, you'd prefer us to stick to full cards or happy for us to sort of float around while we're all around Australia. As we get towards days like the Stratty, though, Beaver, I guess we'll dive right into the Queensland form. Uh, let's go to yep. Morfordville first, where we kick off the quaddy with race six. Uh, the Chairman's Group 3 over the 2,000 metres for the three-year-olds. Any thoughts on this one? Yeah, nice little race here. Some uh, some travellers here coming over from um, Melbourne and a couple of the locals as well. I've stuck with the favourite, Harley Moven. Uh, really like the way that this horse is going at the moment. Uh, was outstanding just off the pace last start in the listed uh, race uh, just sat off the pace and blew him away by four lengths. That was off another win uh, prior to that, where it won just as convincingly. Um, and then, you know, prior to that, over a mile, it flushed home uh, behind a pretty good field. So it's been finishing off its races really nicely. I think it's super hard to beat. With the main danger, uh, Jungle Magnate um, at double figure odds. I thought it was really good first up. And its run last start wasn't as bad as um, what it looks on paper. Uh, tailed right out and finished off nicely. It was only three to four lengths off um, Son of Emperor, who is in this race, but um, gets a little bit of a weight relief there. And I think this would be more, it'll be more suited here. Um, I think it drops one and a half with Son of Emperor, goes up three and a half. So it meets it five kilos better for only being three, three to four lengths off it. So at the weights, um, I think it could beat at home uh, some of those horses and uh, you're getting double the double the odds. So I like Harley Moving and I would save on Jungle Magnate. And you're getting Damien Oliver. Correct. I've got nothing more to add. It's exactly the way I saw the race. Uh, Harley Moving will smash daisies who we both have an opinion of and is in the market when we get to the Oaks next race. And uh, couldn't be more impressive. So very hard to beat here. And you covered off Jungle Magnate perfectly. The Group 1 Australasian Oaks over the 2,000 metres for the Phillies is up next. Good race. Again, interesting race here. I have put mac and cheese on top. Uh, just got chopped out at a, uh, just when I was just about to really hit the line chasing my whisper last start. I like the fact it's drawn gate 18 and hopefully it'll suit this horse that needs just clear air to wind up and can hopefully come down the outside if the track's allowing it to do so. It's $11, and I think that's a fair bet. Uh, market suggests my whisper, the obvious danger, unbeaten this prep and did beat Mac and Cheese home. And the forgotten horse here is Barbed Raider, who gets a wide gate, gets Craig Williams, and you just forget the the Sydney run uh, on the bog and um, behind Emily and treat it off its runs before that, which fit perfectly here. And it, again, it's double figures. So they were the three I had. A couple other bits and pieces of horses that are going quite well, but um, the other ones for me, Beaver, how do you see the race? Yeah, look, um, I was a bit disappointed with Mac and Cheese last start. I thought it, I don't think it settled, um, and that worries me a little bit, uh, stepping up in distance, I think. Um, and the other horse, My Whisper, sat three wide the whole way and still let down and went away from it at the end and still looked at like it had plenty in the tank. I thought it was a, I thought it was an amazing win. I, I, I backed Mac and Cheese in the race and Mac and Cheese was kind of, it, it was pulling a little bit, but was sitting behind My Whisper. And when My Whisper was um, uh, three wide, I thought, oh, we'll, we'll go past this. And when when they White Whisper let down, it kicked away from Mac and Cheese. Yeah, it might've got a little bit chopped out in its run, but I just don't think it was going as, as good as the other thing. Mm-hmm. Um, my whisper's got gate three here, mac and cheese 17. Um, yeah, I've got my whisper on top. I thought it was just dynamic last start. Uh, there was a lot to like about its win. Um, 
couple of the others, I think there's a uh, glint of hope is a huge chance in this. Um, it was almost, well, started favourite in the race um, by Sun of Emperor, the Sun of Emperor won last start. And uh, I thought it ran home really nicely. I think the step up in distance will suit. Uh, it's got to be super hard to beat. So I had hit as probably my main danger. Very good. Uh, race eight is the uh, City of ha Adelaide handicap, where I am with I am with Mavada here. It will roll forward. It's been in so going around in some decent races. Jamie Card goes on. No one rides Morfittville on pace much better than her, um, and gets control of this race. There's maybe two chases, and I think the four dollars fifty is a, a reasonable price. So I'm with Mavada to get the job done here. Yeah, look, um, uh, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure I agree. Uh, I think Struck By will probably take control. Um, yeah, okay. And I don't really hold... The, the Oak Bank form, I don't sort of... I've kind of put a bit of, little bit of a line through it. And I think as run at Oak Bank was pretty good last start, but it's it's an interesting track and it's up and down hills and... And outside round, fence. Round and round yeah. and outside fence. And it's a little bit all over the shop. Uh, prior to that... Um, it started favourite in that race, uh, the Zoist one last start, but still wasn't far off him. I think it can probably um, take a good uh, sit up front here, control the pace, and could be hard to beat. And I thought there was a real um, good knockout chance in one more Jack. Uh, goes well at this, goes well at this track, um, and yeah, hasn't been. Won really well three starts back at Murray Bridge. Uh, probably didn't do its best at Morfittville, but wasn't the worst again in the same race at 26s against Zoist last week. So had form in this field. So around the 20s mark uh, is a sneaky knockout chance. Beautiful. So struck by on top. Race nine is the benchmark 78 over the 1,300 metres, which will be run on the Parks track. Uh, what are you doing in this one? Yeah, I didn't really know a lot about this one. Um, this was super tricky. I I settled on uh, trip. Yeah, um, I liked its first, I liked its last run. I thought it was a, a pretty good run trip. But yeah, like so did I. And I think it um, I think it probably comes across this field. Uh, got the fifty six and a half, and hopefully can lead these and uh, kick and kick strongly in the straight and hold them off. Yeah, I thought the same. Uh, led them up last start and was just nabbed uh, not far from the line. But, you know, it feels a bit like it, it could be one of those ones where everyone's on Jamie Carr in the last and everyone cheers. But happy to be with Trip each way at Morfordville. Are we doing Where are we doing quaddies for you? Do you want to just save it for Queensland? Mate, I'll stay, save for Queensland and I'll let you do Morfordville. Ah, uh, whatever. Whatever we just said. Put them in a quaddy. I haven't hadn't thought about okay, it. Okay, I'll go through it. Do you want to? Um, no, well, I'll, yep. we don't have to do one ever all the time. But if you want, I've got one, Matt. Right? I've got one here. Um, so in Morfittville, uh, first leg, I'm going to go number two, Gun Deck, number three, Jungle Magnate, number four, Harley Moving, and number eleven, Polani. In the second leg, I'm going to go number three, Daisies, number six, My Whisper, number seven, Mac and Cheese, number eight, Mammonia, and number 10, Glint of Hope. In the third leg, I'm going to go number three, Morvada, number eight, Zoist, number nine, One More Jack, number 10, Struck By. And in the last leg, I'm going to go number seven, my boy Birmingham, number eight, trip. Number three, extra time, and number 16, wild imagination. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah, you got a best in value there? Yeah, mates. Uh, my value bet comes up in race nine, number eight, trip. And my best comes up in race seven, number six, my whisper. I'll make my best. 
Harley Moving and my value Barbed Raider in the Oaks. As we head, we'll cover off the Queensland black type stuff to wrap up the show. Eagle Farm, of course, don't forget to check out Pro Group Racing for all their news. Give us a like and subscribe on YouTube as well and leave some uh, commentary in the uh, or leave some commentary below on your thoughts and what you might prefer from us, whether you'd like to see some full cards as usual or just look at some of the features for the next uh, next few months as we head through the winter racing. But we kick off at Eagle Farm, soft track, and uh, the first leg of the quaddy is a, cl- a very tricky class three, but you've got a bit of a feel for some of these. A couple of your usual favourites are here. Uh, have you got a feel for the race? Yeah, it's a, it's a good one, actually. It's got a couple of my um, horses in here that I don't mind, um, namely Pal- Pilatus. Yep. Uh, it's a horse that I like, and I, I'll be on it first up. Its first up form here is not great. Um, it hasn't won, you know, it's it's not a horse that wins a lot, which worries me a bit. It runs places. Uh, but I've, its first two, its trial was really good. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be set for this, uh, for a really good first up tilt. Uh, whatever it does, I'll probably prove on. Uh, we'll probably have to go back and fly home. Um, but it's a good horse and has a really good turn of uh, speed. So I've got Pilatus on top. Uh, maybe the best is another horse that I do like. Um, previous form in Melbourne, now up in Brizzy. Uh, it'll probably sit pretty close to the pace, if not be the pace. So it might be hard to beat. I saw it similarly. The one just away from the market that I went looking for was Park Avenue. Uh, it's been a while between drinks, but I think its last run, the uh, last couple of runs fit this race pretty well. Uh, and it getting up from Sydney uh, always, that, that form always stacks up quite well here. Uh, and Paladis was the other main one off the freshen up, will run well for me. Race seven is the Queensland Guineas. Uh, for the three-year-olds, interesting race where... I wasn't quite sure which way to look, to be honest. Uh, some question marks over some of them. And it was a little bit looking for your guidance, to be honest, Beaver. Yeah, it's a, it's a good race here. Oh, look, I really like Bend the Knee. Um, I think it's it's working into its preparation nicely for a race like this. Um, it was really good first up against Mazu um, over the 1,200. Um, at odds, uh, that was to blow the cobwebs out. Uh, showed really good improvement last start off at, behind Villiana. Um, worked home nicely there over the 1400, out to the 1600 now. Uh, looks to be super hard to beat. And if you go back looking at its last start, uh, last preparation, um, had some really good form in Sydney, then went to Flemington, ran well. I think. Uh, is that Cup Day? Um, Is it the Cup or Oaks Day? Yeah, I think it was. Might have been Cup Day. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe Oaks Day. Um, ran well there. Freshened up here. I think um, it might be set to have a really good uh, preparation up in Queensland. So bend the knee for me. Beautiful. Uh, race eight is the Victory Stakes. The return of Rothfire who, well, I'm not really going out too much of a limb, but had a, bless you, had a um, <laughs> recovery prep last time. And I think from the trial, we can assume it might be somewhere back to its best. Is that the way you're looking at this? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it might be back to its best. And this is probably a, a field that could e- easily take care of um, if it is anywhere near its best. Yeah, Uh if it is its best, it, yeah, as you said, it'll win. Uh, interested to see Star Tontes return and yep. chase it. Uh, it's going to be hard to beat in some of those Queensland fillies and mares races up there. Uh, and do you have much more to add here? No, nothing else, mate. Race nine is uh, finishes the card with a class six, where, as the market suggests, Go Wanji is uh, going to be very hard to beat. Uh, to finish the day and hopefully um, get us all home with a winner. Is that the way you thought? Yeah, look, it was an absolute mm. um, nightmare beaten last start. Uh, that's it, Butchard. Uh, if you're on, you'd be, you'd be fuming. Uh, let's hope that uh, 
it's a better ride this time because it should have just it should have just bolted in last start. It wasn't tested and ran second. Um, yeah, looks super hard to beat here. Just can't see it getting beat. Beautiful. Uh, are you doing a quaddy? You gonna double down on the quaddy here? I'll double down on the quaddy, yeah. mate. Go for it. Okay. In the first leg, we have number three, Paladas. Number nine. Maybe the best, number 12, Park Avenue, number 14, Arenti. Uh, in the second leg, we've got number one, the Coast Watch, number three, Bend the Knee, number 12, Ashgrove, and number 15, Festival Dancer. Nice. Leaving out the favourite, which I do. Leaving I, out the favourite. I um, Taking it off. don't disagree with it all, no, so that's cool. Yep. Uh, in the next leg, I'm going number three, Rothfire, and number 11, Star Tontes. And then to finish the day, I'm going numbers five, Go Wanji, number eight, Blondo, number 11, New Arrangement. Fantastic. Uh, beautiful. You got a best. Have you looked through the rest of the card up there? Any I have had a look day? through the rest of the card. Um, and my best bet comes up in race three, number five, Curve Royale. Mm. Uh, resuming, uh, I think it'll be super hard to beat. That's uh, my best bet. And the other horses I like are obviously Gowanji, Rothfire, and Bend the Knee. Fantastic. Good little betting day at Eagle Farm. Track's been um, not too bad either lately, has it? It's been okay. Yeah, it's not not bad at all. Beautiful. And any else around the rest of Australia? We have. We're just saying off here. We haven't had a um had a chance to dissect um Sandown too much. No, no. Um, I thought uh, in race three, number one, Jaconi. I thought it could um, run really well, and I thought in race five, number ten, Jayanthi. Uh, Likewise, could yep. run extremely well. And the resuming Eagles Craig in the last, number 11. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Um, that wraps up. Pro, uh, show us your tips for Pro Group Racing looking towards this Saturday. If you uh, want to jump on board with them and sign up for the mailing list, you'll get regular news updates as well as our show. Tune box free twice a week, every week. Good punning this weekend. Be you heading out to Hawkesbury? Um. That would be a negative, mate. Fair enough. Good luck to everyone who is. Uh, I'll be at Royal Burrower, so uh, good luck to me too. And oh, God help you. Yeah, I know. Give me strength. At the picnics. Yeah, at the picnics. So let's see how we go there. Um, take it easy, Beaver, and we'll chat to everyone Tuesday night for our midweek preview. Catch you soon.